some blood flow and let's do it. Vega versus Kaifi, definitely an interesting matchup here. What mm -hmm. are you thinking we're going to see in terms of, you know, who's powerful, who's still sorting themselves out? Well, I reckon the Faceless Void, probably a, a likely culprit here, hasn't been banned out. We've, we'll see if he follows uh, in the Ten trend seconds. of being first picked, Remain. first banned Reserve every time. series thus far. Things still continuing to be interesting Five here in the uh, post TI6 era. Now we see Iceberg officially tagged up on the side of Vega Squadron. Uh, and today, I believe he was not playing with them uh, earlier in the bracket. G going to be here today uh, in stand-in mode for FN, it looks like. They had so you've FN. got G, FN, G, but no FN. Yep, that's actually kind of funny. They dropped the FN, added the G, still FN, G, the captain drafted today. <laughs> going to first pick the void, so that's good. Everything falling into line here, what we would expect. But cool to see Iceberg officially seconds, tagged up really? now. And, um, well, kind of curious how this changes things around in the lanes. We saw FN play position one yesterday. Iceberg play the mid. Uh, we'll see if G is going to be on the one or if they swap things around a little bit and have G play a little bit of mid lane. Something to keep in mind as this series continues. Man, show me that Iceberg mid invoker. So lovely every time you see it. But we're going to see an Oracle picked up for Vega Squadron. So mm -hmm. kind of discouraging those Darkseer picks, those Batrider picks, just getting rid of a little bit of that control with the purge. And good against Marana as well. You get hit by an arrow, you've got a way to keep your friends safe, often with the purge, sometimes some heals, and hey, even a false promise sitting behind to keep folks alive. So, Baseless Void first pick, still uh, continuing to show some versatility for us here. Annie could be safe lane, could be off lane. Only time will tell. We, we've seen it both ways, and I, I think it really can work both ways as well. Kai B now with a nice control support. Haven't seen Disruptor prioritized quite this much, but great team fight, great lockdown to have against both those heroes, and of course gives them more initiation power. A lot of catch on the side of Kai P already. Absolutely. I mean, they've got a ton of utility. What they got to watch out for is survivability. You've got your Disruptor, who's absolutely the most fragile support ever. Uh, and the Marana, she's great. She can leap in. She can drop double Star Storms when she gets the Ags. But after that, they've got to have some sort of sustain. So we'll see what else Kaipi's looking to pick up for their cores. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Marana does provide you some flexibility, a lot of magical burst damage. So now they can... Go for a nice physical damage dealing core. Third and fourth bands on the way. Beastmaster Tide taken out by Vega. Old Clinky Winky by Kaipi. Hmm, what else do they want to ban out here? Maybe a Huskar. Dazzle still in the pool. Oracle already picked up. And they're Might underestimating they Iceberg's out. Invoker. I don't know that if it's too. still like absolute top of the charts, but I just remember watching that uh, a couple good. months back and just draw drop. Like he never missed a spell. It was crazy. Yeah, no, it's. It's good, especially when you've got a Faceless Void to set it up. And they actually opt to ban the Tinker. Okay. Think Vega are going to pick the Huskar? They uh, could still do it. I'm not that confident either, but uh, this I... is a good setup. I mean, there's no Drow Aura. You could go combo with it. You could go for the Dazzle, but then your two supports are very, very defensive. You've got the Oracle and the Dazzle, True. which uh, doesn't give you a whole ton of utility, but it's a possibility. I mean, you could go for those raw burning spears, but uh, you've got to be prepared to get completely nuked down because with the like silence and... Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a good point. I, I, I like where you're going. I think it also fits the Vega style a little bit. That's part of what makes me want to see uh, an FNG squad play a little bit of Huskar. Now Ogre Magi picked up likely their second support. Yep, so Kai P sitting back, uh, <laughs> nine and a half chance we're going to be seeing a Sing Sing Marana. Very excited to watch him hit those arrows. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of overall roster, kind of shuffles around. We've got 3 3, who is the Coon, I believe. He usually plays their off lane. My that boy. puts Sexy Bambo on their support. Wow, okay. They take the Hustar. All right. That's neat. Um, that's surprising. I wonder if they're thinking about a Dazzle fourth pick now. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something they could get away with. They've got their raw utility with Disruptor, and then their survivability mm -hmm. can come from Dazzle. Yeah, pairs pretty nicely. Gives them a pretty good mix of damage as well. I would not have guessed they would pick the Huskar here, though. I, I was about to say, well, maybe a, a Sand King for the Sexy Bambo. Just go for a lot of big team fight and do that around a damage-dealing core like a Medusa or something, Ooh, and you could be in good pick. shape. But this is great, though. It means something interesting for Vega, either a core Oracle, a core Ogre, or a core Ancient Apparition. And I'm really not sure which one it's going to be. Yeah, I'm thinking if you put Ogre in that kind of mid position, then Faceless Void and Ogre fill a very Ten similar seconds, role in the right. sense of your kind of big beefy bruisers that walk up and smack and occasionally Ten lock seconds, people in place. Right. They don't really fill two different niches. It's it's very much an awkward situation for Vega to be put in, but I do think AA was the right call here. Otherwise, what do you do against this Huskar? 
Yeah, uh, this is definitely uh, a very effective pick for sure. And just a, a good hero to utilize also. Um, can synergize with the Faceless Void. You set up with the Chrono, drop the Global uh, Ice Blast. A lot of damage. Makes the Void's life a lot easier. Still not sure if it's the offlane more utility Void or if we're looking at a position one hard farming Void where he's going to be one, uh, the one doing the hard hitting here. Um, one of the things about Core Ogre is that he doesn't really synergize what? with the Void super Dying well, but that. now they take Wisp. Mm. Um, this is a weird draft. They, they have one stun. <laughs> They don't the seem to care about ancient apparition. I, I like their uh, their grapes. I think they're going forward and they're picking something aggressive. Kaipi gets what they want to get. Not really giving a whole lot of credit to Vega Squadron's counter ability. We'll see if Kaipi can continue Five to get the jump remaining. or if they fall behind. Yeah, this is um, an interesting mix of heroes. They have pretty good team fight in some regards if they can connect with Marana arrows they've got great follow-up if they can catch somebody with glimpse they've also got pretty good follow-up great mobility across all of these heroes well disruptor doesn't really have the mobility but tools to prevent mobility from enemies so sort of a an equal but opposite type deal i don't know how well this is going to work out though annie i'm scared against the likes of faceless void ogre with potentially an agonim scepter that's a lot of control in and of itself and they still have another hero to go i do like this slardar band though that's a, a good Five control that remaining. would have helped deal with some of the things this kaipi draft lacks yeah kaipi their lockdowns lack and unless you get someone locked down in the kinetic Radiant field you can't hold it back for that long as many arrows as Sing Sing can hit, they just don't stun for long enough to completely blow up every member of the team. So Kaipi, they've got to tie it all in a pretty little bow here. They've got their two supports. They've got their Sing Sing hero. What else do they pick up for, for uh, their offlaner, I guess? Yeah, uh, looking like the Coon hero here. Maybe, I mean, okay, Tidehunter's been banned out. A lot of the good offlaners banned here. Mm, clockwork is in the pool. Dude, I hate Clockwork so much. Good against just, Ancient Apparition, but it's not really struggles in the laning phase, and you can't let Void get ahead. Um, Dark Seer is still in the pool. Actually, I think Dark Seer is a reasonable pick here against an Oracle. Still, I mean, he can farm at least. I don't know. They kind of put themselves in a funky place. If I mean, they really isn't... wanted to, and they I, could I... go for the Sand King. Yeah, Sand King off lane could work. Could try to do. Ugh, no, I, I wanted to say core off sh earth shaker off lane, but I don't think that's happening. There's no way it would get any farm. This is a tough call. I, I'm not seeing an obvious off lane choice here. I feel like I need to look at the hero chart. I mean, it's possible it could be Marana off lane and then. Oh, that. Oh, yep, okay. Just fuck us. What the hell do we know? So, how are these lanes going to go now? <laughs> Safe lane, Huskar, Meepo, mid, with a wisp, off. I, I have no idea how they're going to lane this. You got Meepo soloing, doing his own thing. Io, Huskar, they're a cute little buddy. Marana, Maybe they'll like sack the off lane off -laning. Yeah, and just stack and farm and, and go greedy that way. That could also work. They kind of jungle Meepo almost, bleach some XP in the off lane, but... I, I have no idea. This is one I'm not going to try to predict. We'll just see what happens. Interesting stuff from Kaipi, for sure. It does give them a little bit of control with that Earthbind and quite a bit of good damage. Um, with the Meepo in the game, that kind of changes things, <laughs> Annie. I mean, Meepo's a wild hero. I mean, he's, he's one of those heroes that um, can just completely take over. And now if you're Vega, you're thinking, well, we've got Faceless Void. That's sort of a counter to Meepo, but not entirely. Um Either really effective AoE or burst damage is pretty good. You know, heroes like Lena and Lion can be good to just burst down one specific Meepo. You know, heroes like Earthshaker are sort of thought of as a counter, um, but not not the end all be all of counters against Meepo. Um, I they take Sand King. Right. Okay, well, there's a lot of AoE at least. Caustic Finale very good in lane. This is a weird draft on both sides, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, core Ogre being played by Mag, so it's an offlane Ogre for Vega. Cool. I don't, re I don't even know how to analyze this, because I've never seen a combination like this. Well, up so offlane Ogre is actually not that bad. He has really high base regen, uh, way higher than normal. There's only a handful of heroes that have like extra regen like that. Nyx Assassin is also one of them. So believe it or not, he can offlane better than a lot of just other standard supports. Um, so reasonable that Mag should be able to leech some decent XP. Curious what build he goes for in a situation like this, because normally offlane, you want to be able to rely on that iron. Like, could we possibly see an 
an iron talon oh, ogre so here? Is that too weird? No, I mean, I feel like there's maybe potential. I've never yeah, seen that before, but I don't see him getting much farm in the off lane, so that doesn't leave many alternatives. Oh, that's a lovely mini map, Doodle. Yeah, thanks, Sing. <laughs> All right, so we are off to a fantastic start here. I mean, no matter what happens, this is going to be a fantastic game to watch. Hopefully, lots of action, so the lots of kills, lots plays of blood. Meepo, huh? I, I I didn't know that. I mean, I, I, as we not... learned yesterday, we're, we're not super familiar with the coon. Okay, and that is his I mean, name I've on Wikipedia. Him... I know, I know he's a player, but you know, um, I I didn't realize he was a meepo player, and maybe that's on me for not digging deep enough in my uh, bit of research this morning. But I'm excited. I love seeing meepo play. Sexy Bambo on the Disruptor. It looks like they'll do safe lane Meepo with a, well, nope. Huskar and Meepo both headed down to the safe lane for now and Sing Sing's mid. So I, I think this Meepo is going to be working in the jungle. That's, that is uh, my guess for sure. Ogre just goes kind of what you would expect, think of as kind of support items here. Wind Lace, some Tangos, and just a Mango for some extra regen. Nothing too crazy yet coming out of Mag. Yep, we've got a nice little rotation there. G walking around trying to look for some decent vision and blocking and whatnot, but may bite off more than he can chew if he bumps on into Sing, who does have his arrow skilled up, so could potentially go for lockdown, but I think it's everyone just crawling around, setting up for a bloodbath of a game here. Mm -hmm. And on Vega's side, G going to be taking point on the Faceless Void, so he will be filling the role of uh, FN playing safe lane carry. Excited to see this. G, uh, one of the players known for his mechanical skill, you know, his legendary Shadow Fiend and heads up roles. Um... Pumped to see him play this safe lane. A lot of expectations for the Void this game, though. The Chrono is going to be their key to victory, I think, in terms of controlling the mid game and finding those key kills towards the late game to close this one out. So how are you feeling about this Iceberg Sand King? So Sand King mid, um, anticipating it's not a Marana mid, and he's going to make the right call here. So Caustic Finale should be pretty okay in lane against Huskar. Now we're seeing these lanes kind of settle down. It looks like Marana headed uh, off lane for now. Uh, kill the little hell bear there and they're putting meepo safe lane so still a little bit different than what we were thinking out of kaipi they do have a lot of flexibility there's a bunch of ways they could set this up huskar versus sand king 1v1 i'm not really sure who wins this i want to say sand king can hold his own and do surprisingly well but huskar should have a lot of damage to harass him out once he gets a couple levels yeah i think it's going to come down to iceberg's positioning if he's far enough back to be able to walk out of right click range and iceberg is phenomenal at positioning he knows when to go in when not to overexert himself so i am going to say this lane goes very heavily in favor of sand king until wisp starts rotating with bone seven yeah. not too often you'll see a sand king pick up a poor man's shield that's for sure but in the 1v1 <laughs> roll against the range hero it makes sense you got to do it blocks a ton of damage even though that edgy isn't really doing too much for him here so standard stuff from sing sing in the off lane just playing the pesky marana trying to leech experience find last hits wherever possible trade blows with sema but pretty easy farm for g and seems like the same thing in the bottom lane meepo having a pretty good time but there's a dual off lane from vega the soul uh, the ogre's not solo fng sponsored by the nitrogen he's down here as well on frost fingers yeah, I mean, AA levels are super, super crucial, so just having him here to soak is pretty beneficial, but I wonder if he's going to be able to get enough, if he's going to be able to stay close enough to the wave to really accelerate his growth. Yeah, it looks like they are trying to give most of the XP to Mag here. He's picked up boots, so now this ogre is nice and speedy. And look at that regen. No tango on 5.3 with a mango. That's, that's not something many heroes have at this stage of the game. Uh-oh, FNG, though. He's fine. Oh, the glimpse back, though. They might be able to go with the raw right clicks. Little baby AAs are slapping away, but FNG looks like he's in a tough spot. There's going to be a, fair, a fairy fire consumed. Pylai die. Now goes for the Ancient Deny. Sexy Bambo left to his own devices. Neutral kill onto the IO. Sexy Bambo cannot make it to the Roshan. So Iceberg ends up getting the first blood. Bone 7, not too happy about that, but I don't think he's going to be able to fully get this kill. Yeah, a nice rotation from Mag. He ends up trying to set that with the Ogre and get some experience for it. A worthy rotation for him. And of course, Vega make out big, yielding eh, kind of like a kill and a half there, even though they only got credit for one, forcing the Wisp to deny uh, less than ideal. Of course, he had some unreliable gold, so that did set him back just a little bit. Yep, over here in our top lane, we've got Sing Sing versus Void, which is pretty stalled out. Of course, Void can just kind of leap off most of the damage Moronic gives him, but uh, he's getting some decent farm in terms of last hits. Our Faceless Void is all the way up at the top. Mm hmm absolutely. Oracle having a pretty good time as well. Sexy Bambo having to focus a little bit more on heroes this game than just getting his farm going on. So Oracle does have a level up on him. They'll rotate mid oh, now. Bone, bone seven. seven. He's going to get stunned up right there. There is going to be some lockdown, and 
Well, the superior stuns of Vega come in handy. Now Pylai die, Ouch. taking a couple slaps, but he'll be fine. Yeah, a little wisp, trying to do what little he can, but still only level one, just now hits two. Unable to really heal up his buddy there, despite having a fully charged bottle. Good aggressive rotation from Vega. You know, I guess you can't really expect the Oracle moving in at the three-minute mark with a roaming Ancient Apparition without boots. But, you know, this is that classic style. FNG, known as a pretty aggressive player. Usually the teams that he captains like these kind of early rotations. Take a lead early and carry that momentum into uh, the mid-game here. Looking at the graph, Vega with a good 500 net worth and experience oh, lead. Oh, bottom lane, Bambo. They're going in, they want the puff. Mag trying to get himself out of this, tries to he's go and bloodlust so. himself, but he's just going to take a swat there. Bambo lives to see another day. I thought for sure he was going to be dead there. Yeah, close call for sure, but well played by the Meepo. Good earth finds, and now Bambo gets healed up by the Wisp as he finds the free rune here at the four minute mark. A little blueberry for the energy ball. Stun mid lane, falls short on Bone 7. Iceberg now gets a few love taps back, but it looks like everyone will survive for now. More rotations on the way. Kaipi with both their supports on the low ground. The wards coming down. Both teams with wards in the same area. Radiant oh. drop a sentry. We'll see if they can get the ward. Iceberg comes stunning in, and oh. Pylai die will fall. The ward still standing. Bambo trying to secure this kill. Glimpse back. Sand King in a lot of trouble. Now even Sing Sing joining the party. He'll be able to right click him down. And FNG with no choice but to back up, and this dire observer will fall. No Vega not getting the better of that one, losing their Sand King and a ward. Very unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, they traded away their Wisp, and he was at kind of that crucial experience point. If he had been able to live through that, he would have leveled up to three, but uh, it's it's all right. It's a trade you're definitely willing to make to get out that mid-Sand King. Yeah, three to two. Everyone goes back to farming. Radiant starting to pull ahead a little bit, though. Two level six heroes. Meepo getting some nice space in the safe lane. Just a couple of last hits ahead of the Void. About 100 net worth or so. But of course, the Meepo hasn't even really oh, started Mac. yet. He'll still explode from here. Oh, that's a kinetic field and an earth find. Nowhere for the chubby ogre to go. Four heroes on one. The double Meepos make it an easy kill. The Coon getting credit for that one. Three to three. Five minute mark. Yeah, I mean, Ogre's tanky. Ogre likes to stay back and do his own thing. But when you've got 3-3 rotating this early on, able to go and find his levels, he's already level 7 yeah. at 5.5 minutes in. Very nice work from him, splitting it's... up in uh -oh. the lane in the jungle. And now uh -oh. Nitrogen gets burned alive. That Icicle uh, just turns right to Liquid. And now Sexy Bambo going to get chained in place just briefly with the glimpse back. It means Oracle does not get to stick around. Unfortunate for uh, Sayoma the Slayer there, but another nice kill for Kaipi. Nothing the Ancient Apparition could do, and just like that, this Radiant team is looking to be in good shape out of this laning phase. Meepo well ahead, now above the 3k net worth mark, already 1300 gold towards the Dragon Lance, Aghanim Scepter, Blink Dagger, whatever that next item choice may be. Really depends on how aggressive he wants to be, if he just wants to go more farming, or the Blink Dagger possibly a bit more aggressive. Mag again under some pressure, but we'll be able to make it back this time. He does pick up some raindrops, so he should be a little more survivable. Well, the top lane, maybe Sing Sing gets sandwiched in upon. There is going to be a ping out. They want to go for this. Faceless Boy does have his Chrono, but it's a deep commit. Iceberg's hasted, but his little legs can't skitter that fast. Yep. Back to farming we go. How's G looking here? He's been pretty quiet, just power treads. Pretty basic kit on him, about a thousand gold. I'm very curious what the safe lane void looks for in items. He does but go for that Lincoln Spear we've seen pretty commonly. That doesn't really strike me as a G build, though. Something tells me he might go uh, a little more aggressive here. Blink Dagger, even just a Morbid Mask for enhanced farming. In fact, he might even just pick it up right here. Nope, grabs the Ring of Health, so maybe it is that Lincoln's after all. Just keeping I mean, it standard. It could be a Battle Fury, but I don't think we're going to go down that route. Depends if he wants to go ultra hard farm late game. I mean, there's a potential Vega wants to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think there is potential for the Battle Fury, though. Probably a, like a 17% chance or oh, so, something like get that. Out of not, here. not very high, but no, I mean, seriously, it's not likely he gets Battle Fury, though. It is a oh, build yeah. that. I think people would say is bad, and it's it's not awful if you get space. It can still turbo farm the void. It is pretty nice for just doing a lot of damage in Chrono. <laughs> Battle Fury gives you a really nasty right click uh, right when you pick it up. So that does synergize with him in, in some sense. Sing Sing does get a lot of experience. He's level 7, but really low farm right now. Really low. Oh, oh. oh, relocate. No, nah, they're just nope, sitting just around. around. Okay. Tethering through Highlight the jungle. I tethered across, and I panic. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, back up top. And... <laughs> You know, as much as I flamed the coon for having the name the coon, I kind of wish he would just retag himself as the coon because chat is exploding with the, the double three conspiracy theory. Is it Envy? Is it Weeha? Is it anyone else in between? Or is it actually the coon? Is that a pseudonym? The world may never know, Annie. This could be anyone. It's the coon. 
<laughs> it is, yeah. Just no, so I... you guys know. And now AA down bottom. Looks like there's going to be a deep dive. Bone 7 slamming away. Look at these TP rotations. Three of them pouring in. Oh, I think Bone 7 might be fresh out of luck here. The IO trying to get something done. Doesn't have that relocate. Only level 5. So this Huskar is just scooting his boot as fast as it goes. There is the Chrono available if she wants to leap forward. Ooh. Oh, there's the Chrono just right on the edge. They have the lock down there. There is going to be that Fortune Zen to keep him in place. He's going for the TP. Do they have the damage? They do. He does end up popping down. Nice to done. Purifying flames right there. Oracle gets credit for the kill. Five to five. Vegas Squadron showing a sign of life here. The Meepo Snowball is still rolling, though. He's just happily farming away in the jungle. He is going for that Aghanim Scepter build, which I think is probably closer to the standard. Get that extra Meepo out. Gives you more damage, more farm ability, and just overall more efficiency with the hero. And, of course, those yummy, yummy stats, stats that, that go to all your little Meepo babies. He is still number one on net worth very comfortably. And Kaipi, I think, are okay to trade a little bit here and there. Maybe not always take the best fights if it means the Meepo is split pushing, free farming, and doing all his stuff in the jungle. Yeah, Meepo is one of those heroes that's kind of known for being a little bit flimsy in the early game. You can get caught out a couple of times, but I mean, this game, lacoon has been playing pretty flawlessly. Two kills, no deaths. He's already starting to have an impact. We're not even 10 minutes in. I think if this goes ultra late game, Vega better put on their big boy pants because it's going to get very tough for them to live up against this dude. Yeah, Faceless Void now up to the Perseverance and Armlet out on the Huskar. So Bone 7 can start to get a little more active here. Maybe take some fights, feel a bit more comfortable. Mag just TP's home in the bottom lane as he sees uh, an incoming threat. He'll make it out safe and sound. Meanwhile, up top, Smoke Rotation, Sing Sing, and Sexy Bambo looking for blood. I mean, you've got Sexy Bambo just unleashing it. There will be a glimpse back, keeping Void in place. He's silent stuff. He can't go for that. I'm walking now. Nope, just leaps back, gets all his wah, health, wah, and wah. they don't finish things off, unfortunately. Shoot arrow, no hit arrow. Yeah, I mean, those are the kind of times that Faceless Void just makes you want to face palm. Now Sing Sing stunned under the tower. They'll dive it. One more auto attack, and they'll find this kill. He makes it out, pops the healing salve. Sing may still fall, though. A caustic finale catches him from downtown, but G can't quite get the last auto attack. Bambo, Pylai die now on the chase. They want Iceberg, but he's able to make it away with the stun. Meanwhile, up top, G. Scoots past the tower, Moonlight Shatter deployed, Bambo wants some, connects with the life break, auto attacks, but G again with the time walk, mitigates all the damage, now out of options, Chrono and 8, Bone 7 can't dive the tower, and they'll all survive. That's a really weird fight from Kaipi, it's like there were three different heroes going in three different directions trying to pull for three different kills, it was a little bit unorganized, I think if they had all grouped up, focused their resources on a single Vega hero, they might have gotten something out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I, I agree with you. Very scattered Vega about, and good, good on Vega to make it out. I mean, Sand King, one of the more elusive heroes. 1,400 gold, I would imagine, working towards the Blink Dagger next. Going for just mana sustainability items for now. Get that mobility tool and look for more blood. Now a smoke from Vega. They've got the Chrono on G, and they want to use it for something. Yeah, going up top is definitely some guaranteed blood. Bone 7 plays with fire. I mean, he's got his armlet, not afraid to use it. He's also got those 17 charges and the magic wand. But if he lets himself get a little bit too low, there are a lot of stuns, a lot of catch on Vega. Looks like there is going to be only level 5 on AA. He needs that level 6. He wants that Ice Blast, focusing on farming rather than diving in. Meanwhile, in the back lines, there is going to be a nice little stun there from Iceberg going with the Burrow Strike. There's going to be the Ice Blast connecting. As a, okay, that Oscar is... dies. Nicely yeah, done with the dead. False Promise. And they're looking for survives. more. Oh my, he will end up going down. Huskar has the damage, gets credit for the kill. It's still nicely done by Vega. They delay it, and they get much better exchange there. Huskar does finish off the tower before that fight starts, maybe tipping the scales for Vega just a bit oh, they're more. Going now back Meepo in. comes in. Sing Sing, not going to get caught up by this one. The Chrono connecting onto two. Meepo, he's ready to turn this. He's ready to fight back in, but who's their target? They jump in. They will get the kill on the Oracle. The Wisp is somehow still alive. They get the net. G wants to leap away. They're turning this onto Iceberg, who's channeling up his ult, but it does get cancelled. They are able to get it done with the net, and that means there's going to be two dead, fallen down, triple kill. 433, fantastic playing from the Meepo. He appears yeah. and shows his dominance. A couple of really ambitious plays there from Vega and a few misplays as well. G spent a lot of his time just running around being kited by the Wisp. Ice Blast flying in, not going to connect here in the top lane as everyone on Kaipi TPs out. Um, 
you need more damage out of your void and that is one of the drawbacks when he can go, goes for a build like this whether it's the battle fury or the lincolns um they really want to drop the chrono pop somebody and run not sit in these long drawn out team fights because void just doesn't have the mobility to stick on someone even with the maxed out time lock on top of that the sand king almost a really good ultimate there super ambitious to try to channel that ult in front of all the meepos earth finds of course they've got a little interrupt so it just takes one net to connect and prevent you from getting off your ult in that long uh, cast point with the channeling rough stuff for vega and now kaipi comfortably ahead the meepo we we're talking about that snowball rolling before look at him now agonim scepter moving into that first dragon lance going for some value stat items 7.6k net worth compared to the 5.3 of the void he he's is still five and oh. comfortably ahead oh yeah that too and 145 cs at 13 minutes very impressive yeah, I mean, he's got more meeps to work with, more farm to be taken, but he is just absolutely getting off to a great start. If you're Vega, what's your best option to keep this guy in check? You gotta get this void farmed. Right now, that's the priority. Uh, for Vega, they want to look the tempo of this game. Kaipi, they want to keep it upbeat. Now that the Meepo's got a good start, they got all these great ganking potential heroes. They want to find kills. They find G right now with the Moonlight Shadow trapped inside the sexy Bambo Static Storm Kinetic Field. And the follow up, and Io actually taking credit for that one. Nice gank on the high prize faceless void. Doesn't get better than finding the position one in the jungle. Yep, and now they rotate back. There's going to be the relocate ending just in time for Iceberg. Uh -oh. Can they get the glimpse off? They got Bambo here. Does he have the range? He does. They're going to bring him back in. Oh, goodbye, little buggy. He's going to get healed up by the Oracle. See what the Slayer doing what he can, but there's the Meepo to come in. Rip apart the Oracle. They're turning things onto Mag now. All he wants to do is a Ding Ding, but unfortunately, he wow. will drop to the grave. They trade their Huskar, but they get four in return and some free pressure onto this Tier 2 tower. Yeah, it's starting to feel like this Huskar pick could have been bait to make Vega go for that Ancient Apparition after they are already has their two supports. Oracle, Ogre, one of them has to be a core, and even though Ogre was a core in the lane, his farm isn't really that much different from a support right now. He's got Arcane Boots, Wind Lace, and that's it. His impact, minimal, and now they have nothing to deal with this Meepo. Sure, Ice Blast connected on Huskar there. They were able to kill him in the fight, but they still have nothing for the and even a Chronosphere down. Oh, the Glint! They're Where's... able to get it off. There is going to be an ice, ice Blast, but Nitrogen's going to pay with this life. There will be a relocate back, keeping the Meepo safe. They're back at base. They're doing what they can, and well, they all leap to get their regen. I does have to come back into this may end up losing his life but as i was saying where is the damage a, a nice ice blast almost gets the kill but they needed more they needed follow-up that sand king ultimate was the missing piece of the puzzle for vega and they've still yet to find the perfect combo um, so i think for them it's slow this down play around your ultimates if you have both maybe look for a pick off but don't force it because right now void needs farm getting close to the lincoln's though he has the uh orb just about already you ever notice how identical the Ice Vortex uh, ground animation is to the relocate one? They're <laughs> you know, I never almost, really thought about it, but you're right. almost exactly the same. I thought for a second Io relocated like a foot away, but it's just two different spells. All right, now Roche going to be annihilated here by 33, just going through. He's got his first Dragon Lance. He's got his Aghanim Scepter. He's just got stats for days. There's no way you can stop this guy. He's going to have two lives on top of having like four full meeps ready to go. Now there is going to be the channel coming back up. They got the smoke. They are going to get the jump. Looks like Sing Sing could be in some trouble. There's going to be an Ice Blast to follow up. Hits on no one. 33 wants to back off. Meanwhile, Bone 7 just gets the green light charging in. The Wisp is doing so they can. Pylai die. Trying to overcharge. Trying to heal up, but it's not going to be enough. They go. They get the pick off onto two. The blink forward from Meep I mean, they are able to get something done, but nice burrow strike. Iceberg going in, but they get the static storm to follow up. Sexy Bambo goes through. He gets off his ult, and that's going to be at least one more dying. Iceberg wants to live through this, goes in, tries to get something done. But unfortunately, that means he does have his ogre dropped to the ground. So two for three overall, but Meepo getting more and more kills and able to easily hop back into the Roche pit. Yeah, very convincing fight for Kaipi. They did lose a few at the beginning. Nice setup from the Sand King to get the fight started, but they had the superior race, uh, resources on the Radiant side. The Disruptor did also buy back. Important to note, very heads up play from Bambo, realizing there's Tier 1 tower bottom and mid. He could get back to the fight very quickly, and it was well worth it there. They still don't have an answer for this Meepo. Even with that really nice stun from the Sand King, the Wisp was there to heal up the weakest one. Meanwhile, on the front lines, Bambo in deep, clipped by the ult from the Ancient Apparition. Pylai Dai won't be able to save him here getting brought low by the oracle will survive now meepo on the way in oh. Sing Sing already starting the fight seoma the slayer will fall to the wrath of the miners as they find yet another godlike streak continues nine zero and four on the meepo yep i think no one can forget that i'll bet execration meepo from the ti6 wild cards but this is giving it a run for his money just fantastic performance right from minute one 
I mean, it's definitely a quirky pick. It kind of made the draft look a little bit wonky, but oh man, they are definitely utilizing this Meepa to its full potential. Yeah, this is really impressive. Although, to be fair, some of it, uh, I think, is outdraft. Vega really just don't seem to have great tools to control, and, and the Meepo has had uh, pretty much everything he wanted since this game began. Now for Kaipi, uh, they've got the Aegis, they've got control of the game, they can wait for their next round of core items to be complete, and then they can uh, kind of control what, the tempo of this game, decide when they want the next fight to start. Yeah, I mean, Faceless Void, he's really having a tough time staying alive. He's got himself two deaths, but can't stay in lane very long without feeling like he's getting punished. And he's got himself the makings of a Lincolns. How do you feel about that for this game? The Void, yeah, I mean, it's it's standard. It's uh, probably not going to be enough, though. I don't think there's any one item you could say would be for the Void at this point. Maybe you could make a case that the Blink Dagger would have made it easier for him to get these Chronos off, but... Um... I don't know. If they can stall this game out, they still haven't lost Barracks yet. It's not over for Vega. They have the potential to take a good team fight. If they get a couple of wipes, team fights oh. going their way, they can easily break this open. Smoke on oh. smoke. Oh, and seven. Please have mercy. All he wants to do is farm. They bring in the Meeps, and I don't think G lives through this one. They're going to get surrounded upon in the top lane. There's a bit of a bait going on. Oh, the Chronosphere. He's not able to re-engage off the city. He might just get out with his life. Meanwhile, in the top lane, there is going to be the Fire Blast coming in as Sing Sing dies. So four heroes are able to get the job done for Vega. But now there is going to be the rest of the Radiant Squad looking for some revenge. They don't want to let poor Sing Sing die without any sort of turnaround. And, well, they're going to be able to get some decent damage onto this tower. Even through backdoor, they're still munching it down quite quickly. Yep, down goes the tower, and they probably won't look towards high ground here, but with the Chronosphere down, this is a pretty good time for Kaipi to pick a fight or at least look for pickoff. So certainly understand why they're still in enemy territory and moving around another as this death smoke. squad. They just oh, smoked. Wow. They've got another one. They're using up everything they've got. Iceberg's right behind be. him. He breaks it from the backside on one of the Meepos. Seems like they haven't quite noticed it yet. They relocate onto the other side. Maggot and G. Who do they find here? A little bit of fragmentation going on as G's still burning on the back lines. We do have that kinetic field coming forward. The static storm to Mag. lockdown scene, but there's nothing he can do. Oh, golly. Poor Mag. There's not much. Anything can get Both done. Both seven. seven. He's in some serious trouble. Going to get locked in place. We'll end up blasting down Seema. We'll end up falling down to the Huskar. Just too much damage put out, but at least he's able to take him down with him. Now, Meepo throw nets out left and right, focusing on multiple targets. FNG. Oh, the poor little Icicle. I don't think he's able to live through this one. He's just so squishy. Beyond godlike streak. Still rocking out for the Meepo. He's still got his Aegis going going for him is G. He can't leap back. He's underneath his tier fours. Iceberg's just dancing there, sandstorming up, but I lie die. He'll be this little sacrifice, but nice yeah, trade. You, you can't kill Meepo. He finds the wisp, but yeah, starting to feel like they have nothing to deal with Meepo. I mean, every time they get him close, it's only one of them. Wisp is there with some heals. They can't seem to be able to land the Ancient Apparition ult on both the Wisp, the Huskar, and the Meepo, or any combination of the three. It's really one or the other. They're doing a good job shutting down the Huskar, but that's about it. And it's leaving this Meepo running amok, now destroying their base. Finishes off the mid lane of Barracks. Oh. Uh oh, the stun. They might be able to find this here oh. they will that's the first one remember the ages coming back if he can actually get himself out of this it's gonna be fantastic he's able to blink himself away there's the glimpse falling through and oh my golly g huskar shows no mercy there's gonna be an ice blast does connect onto all the meats nitrogen still alive maybe they're gonna kill on the meat but they gotta pick one to focus down meanwhile bone seven sitting there ready to charge they know as soon as the chrono <laughs> ends he's just gonna fly at you kaipi with no remorse oh for their crimes God. i like i like iceberg's positioning that fight they're like in the Chronosphere, and the Sand King is just back here standing, just watching from afar, like, I don't have an ult, can't really auto-attack him. I think, it, that was the most demoralized Sand King I've ever seen, just like, I think we lost. I'm pretty sure me throwing my life away one more time does not change the state of this game, and boy was he right. His team taps out shortly after. Very convincing win for Kai P. 21 minutes, 20.